Right, just picked up two more things. We've got this large Mountfield self-propelled mower and also another leaf blower here. We've had a little look at this at the moment. It, can't, it won't start. We've sprayed Easy Start in the carburetor and we've got a good spark, but it's still not starting. So let's, let's get into this one. Right, so as you can see, we've already taken the cover off of the top of this and uh, it did have a pull cord on it, as you can probably see, but the pull cord was fully stretched out and basically what we found out by taking this centre pin out is that the actual spring inside is broken, so that's the reason why we took that off. So how we've been trying to start it is literally getting a, a socket, putting a socket on there and turning the engine over like that. So what we've done so far, we've actually sprayed Easy Start in there just to prove that we've got some sort of fuel in there. It has got a full tank of fuel in there, as you can see. But without taking the carb off and checking the carb, we just wanted an easy way to shoot some fuel in there. And as I say, we squirted Easy Start in there, turned the engine over, still didn't want to start. Then we took the spark plug lead off and we've put a, a little spark checker in there and we had excellent spark as well. So basically with fuel and spark, and providing you've got compression and ignition at the right time, the engine should run. So we've proved now that we've got fuel, we've checked that we've got spark. So what we've got to check now is if we've got compression and ignition at the right time, because what could have happened, it could have uh, sheared the flywheel key, and although it's got good compression, or it's, it might have good compression, it might not have ignition at the correct place. So we're gonna get this the uh, compression tester out now, and just put it in there and see what sort of compression we've got. If we haven't got good compression, it could be a problem with the valves. So uh, we're gonna get that plugged in now. So we'll just whip the plug out again. As I say, we did whip the plug out. We're definitely getting fuel to the uh, plug because the plug was wet. So we know it isn't a issue with getting fuel into the engine at this moment in time. So we'll just take the plug out again. And as you can probably see there, the plug is wet and it smells of easy start. So we know we're getting a direct line of fuel in there. So we'll just whack this compression tester in the hole. Just nip it up. Right, there's our gauge there as you can probably see. So what we'll do now is just spin it over mm -hmm. on the drill. Right, well, as you can probably see there, we've got uh, about just under 110 pounds, which is absolutely perfect. So I now know that we haven't got a problem with the valves opening and shutting at the right time. So I'm quite happy with that. So we know we haven't dropped any valves. But just to show you that uh, we've got a good spark, I'll just reconnect that back up again. Put that back in there like that, shut that down. And I don't know whether you can see that or not. As you can see, we've got a very good spark there. So we've got fuel, we've got spark, we've got compression. So my feeling is that we've got a problem with the, possible with the flywheel key, with the ignition at the wrong time. So we'll take this cover off now and we'll have a look at the flywheel key. Oh, right, okay, so we've got our impact gun now. Let's put that on, rewind. And this should just zip this off in no, no time. Here we go, there's our nut off there. There's our little cup. Right, I just wanted to show you this as well, thanks to my lovely subscribers. I got this from Mix Mowers. It's something I've wanted for quite a while now. It's an air hammer, and it's ideal for taking off the flywheels on lawnmowers without you having to sort of damage them. And uh, this is a tool, as you can see there, very nice piece of kit. And I've also got one of the new pry bars I got from one of our other subscribers as well. And uh, I'd just like to thank you both very much indeed for, for these. So let's put these into good use now. Let's see if we can get that flywheel off nice and easy. Right, okay, so here's the air hammer. Just plug that on. And the idea, look at that, look. <laughs> Powerful bit of kit. So the idea is, is that you just sort of hold that on there like that, put the pry bar just under there, and just hit that with the air gun. There we go. Little pop off. And that's actually loosened the flywheel off, no problem. Now, I'm just gonna look at that key now. And as you can probably see, the key is actually fine. The flywheel key, there's no sign of that actually breaking at all. There's our little groove there, what the flywheel key runs in. There's no sign of that being sheared at all. So 
That has surprised me. I thought we'd probably find an issue with that. Right, well, I've put the flywheel back on now. And one thing I just have noticed, I don't think it's made too much of a difference, is that if you can see there, that the gap between the uh, flywheel and the the coil is actually quite big. I'm going to re-gap that. I don't think it's making too much of a difference, but I just want to illuminate that. To me at the moment, this is a bit of a surprise because we've got fuel, we've got spark, we've got ignition, because we know the flywheel's firing at the right time, and we've also got compression over 100 PSI. So I'm just going to re-gap this and then we'll try it again. I'm just going to undo this. Right. Now, I just want to rotate that engine back a little bit. As you can see, I've increased the gap now because I've taken the magnets around the side there. Otherwise, they'll grab onto that. I don't want that to happen yet. Right, so all I've got is this whole bit of card here. Normally, people use a playing card, which is a good idea. So I'm just going to drop that in between the flywheel and the coil with that loose, as you can see. When I rotate the flywheel, the magnet should come back around here and then grab onto that and pull that in. So let's watch that happen. There we go. Just done it now. I just grasp onto that. There we go. Just like that, and just nip up the two screws when that's in place. That's one. There we go, just nip it up and then turn that round. And as you can probably see there, the tolerance on that now is a lot smaller, and I'm hoping that will improve the spark. So we'll try it again. Right, I'll squirt some easy start up the intake port. So we should have plenty of fuel there. Right, let's try it again. Ready? That tried to fire then. It, it? it did a pop, didn't it? Let's try that on faster speed on the drill. No battery now, look. <laughs> that works, battery. It can't take the low, higher torque, can it? No. Let's put that back on single speed. Right, I think that's tried to fire, didn't it? I'm gonna take the plug out and I'm just gonna try squirting something directly in. Now, easy start should have been fine, but I'm gonna try carb spray, something a little bit more volatile. So let's just take that plug out, check the plug. Yeah, the plug is very wet and it's definitely, definitely getting through there. I'll just squirt a drop of that in there. Okay, wipe the plug back in. All right, put that back on. All right, that's clipped on there. No tools around the base. All right, you got the handle down. Let's try that. It's trying to fire, isn't it? Yeah, that's interesting. That should have fired, I would have thought. So it would be better with a pull cord. I think it initially spins over a lot faster when you uh, start it off sort of thing, you know, but I would have thought that would have been enough to kickstart it into life. Try again. Right, well what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the overhead valve cover off and I just want to make sure that the valves are operating correctly because I want to check the gaps to make sure that we've got enough gap there. So that's the next thing I'm going to try. Right, let's just take this uh, cover off then. Just to satisfy myself that the valves are all operating correctly. Right, let's just ease that off. I'll just put that down there, want that bit of residue oil out of there. Right, I'm going to take the plug back out so that we can find the top dead centre and we'll find out what these valves are doing. So as I say, we know we've got plenty of compression, but uh, if the valves perhaps are not fully adjusted correctly, we could have an issue. If they might be too tight, for example. Yeah, we're getting plenty of fuel there. So we've got fuel and spark, as we know. So there's a little screwdriver put in there. We turn that over so that the piston comes up. 
just on the point of ch change there, back there. As you can see, on the rocking point, that is the compression stroke because they're now not moving. I'll go around again and just show you the other stroke because it's a four stroke engine. Right, it's coming up now again to the top of the piston. But now the piston's at the top, as you can see, they're opening and closing, they're rocking. That's not the compression stroke. So let it go right the way down again. Bring it back up again to the top, right on the top, where it's going up and down. But they're not rocking, they're not moving, going up and down. So that's the compression stroke. So that's where we're going to check the uh, adjustment now. Although they seem loose on the side like that, it's that movement, not the sideways movement. So we're going to just check them with the feeler gauges now. So the top one, which is the inlet, see what sort of gap we got there. Right, that's six foul, that falls in there. There's an eight foul. Right, the inlet is probably set at eight foul. And the exhaust, again, is also eight foul. They're not too far out. I was expecting to see them a long, long way out. So I'm going to leave them as they are for the moment because I don't think they're too far out of the ballpark. Right, so... Right, that's that back on. Right, Gary's just gone outside in our other lawnmower stash. We found another Mountfield cover, which appears possibly to have the same spring on it. So we're just going to nick the, hopefully, the spring that's inside that cover there, and hopefully that will fit our new one. And hopefully, because I can't find anything wrong with this mower at the moment, to be honest with you. So it could be that the drill's not powerful enough to actually spin it over, I don't know. So uh, this will confirm it, if we can get this spring on here and pull it over by hand. Right, so hopefully this spring in here will be the same as the other spring. Put your finger at the back there and feel if there's something. You feel nothing turning? I feel nothing. It's just spinning. We should pull that sticker off. Well, we'd have to, wouldn't we? Again, we'd have to peel that sticker off because I don't know whether something underneath there is turning. Right, I'll just try and peel this sticker off again. I'm not sure whether or not there's something underneath here that could be spinning. No, it's not. So that's that. There was a dimple there which I could feel through the uh, sticker, but obviously it's just a, a moulding thing. So again, we've come to a standstill again because I can't actually undo that bolt. Now, maybe I'll have to lever it. I don't know. But definitely that's not coming off when we try to turn that, it's just spinning. Maybe if I put some, hold that, hold this down. If I put some tension on. Don't you just love it? I'm turning it. I'm trying to lift at the same time. See what I might be able to do, stay there. All these little things are sent to try you. Maybe if I can grab hold of that and pull up at the same time. Don't appear to be. Always something in there. There's always something that tries to stop you. So I would have thought getting under there and levering underneath there would have, uh, you know? Yep. Again, there's no rules for this. No, there's no rule book. You've just got to sort of use a bit of logic to get over these sort of problems. And the problem is at the moment, we can't get this screw out. <laughs> That's not a left-handed thread, is it? Yeah. <laughs> It's a left-handed thread. <laughs> How about that? It's a left-handed thread. <laughs> look at that, look. Unbelievable, isn't it? There you go. Left-handed screw in that, look. Unbelievable. Well, you live and learn. Again, if in doubt, turn it the other way. Right, let's get that out of there. Now, I tell you, we, we don't want the spring to fly out. Right, the spring's in there. Latched onto our cover. There we go, I've got the spring out. See, that's what broke off on the other one, this thing. So I'm gonna leave this, cut that thread off, that, that cable, because I'm just gonna put this whole body in our other thing now, yeah? Right, my worktop's a mess again. Where's the cover? Oh, here it is. Oh, it's gonna be a different size, isn't it? It's a different size, but, undo that nut on there. 
If not, I'll, if not, I'll change the spring out. So we lift that one out. See, that's the bit that broke off the other one. Look. So I think that spring's going to have to go in that casing. Yeah, it's a different setup, isn't it? Yeah. So, and it's a different bloody size and all, look. Oh, don't you just love it. Right, we've come to the conclusion that that one's not going to work. It's, the spring's way too big. So I've come up with another idea. As I say, what I have tried doing is bending this as it is and it just breaks off. So what I'm going to try and do is heat this up to take the temper off of it. Bend it in place and then quench it in cold water. Hopefully that will re-energise it again. We've just cable tied the spring in place as you can see so it ain't going to jump out. I'm just going to hold that and just heat this up till it goes red. Right, I'm just going to let that cool down naturally. And when it's cool, hopefully I'll be able to bend it into our shape. And when it's in our shape, I'll heat it up again and then dip it in cold water to quench it. And I'm hoping that's going to do the job. So we'll just let it cool down. Oh, see what I mean? No, that's not worked either. So you've got to try these things. So we're back to square one. We really need a spring, hopefully to be able to pull that over. Right, okay, all back to normal. We've got a more powerful gun now. So hopefully, if it is a slow starting turnover, this should prove that it's the case. So let's just make sure we're going the right way, yep. So here we go, we're gonna try it with a high speed drill. Now, let me just try again with the slower drill. Hey, I'll see, look at that, look. The cranking, for some reason, initially ain't fast enough. So go back to the other one again. There you go. Happy days. Well, we tried a few different things there. We illuminated all what we thought it was. We had spark, we had fuel, we had compression. We then didn't know if we had ignition at the right time, which means taking that off and checking the flywheel key. Once we had all them things, there was really no reason why it shouldn't start. I did check the valves. I wanted to make sure that they was not too small or too big, because that could have an effect on starting. And uh, there was nothing else to try apart from the cranking. We tried to mess about with the uh, pull cord we didn't succeed in that one, so we come up with another alternative, which was to use a higher power drill just to try and start it. And you've just seen it run, it runs absolutely perfectly. So that initial pull you get with a pull cord is, should be enough to kickstart it, but we can't test that until obviously we get the, uh, the actual correct spring. But to see it run and it runs as sweet as a nut and it starts up first time, and it didn't start on the battery drill. So a little lesson there, if you're not having any joy starting it on the battery drill, it could be that you're just not turning it over fast enough. I did try turning the battery drill on high speed, but on the high speed is obviously more torque needed to kickstart it. The battery drill didn't want to know, even though it had a quite a good charge on the battery. So there you go. We've got it running after all. We've run sweet as a nut. This is now ready for a refurbishment. You can go ahead and order the spring now and then start the restoration on it. And really, there's not really much to do with this, is there? Just a clean up, basically. Let's have a little look around it. Just straighten the wheels out. The wheels are splaying a little bit outward so we can sort that one out. There's a little bit of touching up to do maybe on the deck. It's not rotted through at all. It's got a four-speed drive on it, if you look up there. So we've actually got a four-speed drive. All seems to work okay. The cables are all in very, very good condition. So this should be a good earner. We've got a grass bag for it over there, as you can probably see in the corner. The reason why I showed you it this way was process of illumination, how to sort of go around uh, analyzing what's actually working. What we didn't show you was, let me just get it back up there again, Gary. Because we did start looking at this before, you see. I've done a few preliminary checks at the beginning, which you obviously didn't see. I'll show you what I did first of all. And that's why I thought we'd make a video on this, just to show you thought process before making uh, off the cuff remarks about, oh, this, is, this will be the problem, that'll be the problem. This is what I tried first of all. So my first port of call here was to first make sure that the governor arm was moving freely, which it was. 
and then I wanted to make sure that the choke was operating. Now, you can, if you look in there, you probably can't see it, but I can see that the choke is in the open position. And all I'd done was, was to get Gary to shut the choke and open it again. Open it. Yeah. And as you can pop, can you see it? Do it again. And again. And as you can see, we can see that the choke is actually operating. So that was fine. I then looked around the back of the carburetor. This lever here is the throttle control and I wanted to make sure that that again was operating freely, which it was and it was fitted correctly because you never know when people tamper with these. So all these checks I'd done first before we actually started filming. And as I said, I'd already squirted the fuel in there and I'd already checked that the spark was fine. We'd had this plug out and we checked that. And that's when we actually started filming again. And I thought I'd take you along on the thought process just to show you what we come up against and how to illuminate certain things. And uh, for that other Honda we had, Gary's just found a few Honda spares we got. You remember I told you in the last video about the other Honda we had, which had the tight spring, which was making it rev over fast. We just found a batch of spares for Honda. He bought a Honda once, lawnmower, and someone gave him a bag of spares for it. And funny enough, we got one of them springs in it, so that'll be another job, but that'll be another video anyway. Anyway, thought I'd show you this little one. Hope you've enjoyed this little tinkering about video, getting this mount field running and seeing how lovely it does run. This will be a good earner. What'd you pay for this, Gary? 15 quid. Paid 15 pounds for this one. It's a really big mower. Should be good money. The grass bag is perfect. No rips or tears in it. And this will just do with a very good clean up. Did we change the oil in this one? I think this is at a service. The air filter doesn't look new. Plug and the oil's clean. Oh, right, okay. But it didn't have a pull cord. The pull cord spring was broken. Yeah. So that's basically all the problem was on this. But it's just nice to know when you come up against something, you don't know how to go through the checking procedure. Because if you miss one of them things out, it's very easy to get mislaid and not understand exactly what you've done. So basically, if you've got fuel, if you've got spark, if you've got compression, and you've got ignition at the right time, in other words, that the flywheel key is okay, this thing should run, but it didn't do. And we found out the reason being is that our battery drill was turning over too slow to start it. And we proved that by putting a faster drill on it, a more powerful drill, and then we went back to the slow drill and it didn't start again. So there you go. Simple little things, really. We was messing about with that pull cord. And some of these can be interchangeable, as you probably know, but this one obviously wasn't. We did have a go. We tried detensioning that uh, spring, but that didn't work. It snapped off. So we're going to have to get a new spring for it. And hey, presto, we should have a lovely mower. OK, then, I thought I'd share this to you, with you as well. Uh, I'm, I'm, this is a voiceover I'm having to do here because I did not have the microphone switched on, unfortunately. But uh, this is a little gift that come from one of my subscribers as well. It's from uh, Colin Keenan, and he says, Hi, Martin. Just a small gift to show my appreciation for all of the videos that you have uploaded. I've learned quite a bit from them, ex especially the mower and auto repair videos. Keep up the good work from Colin K. Colin Keenan. Well, thanks very much, Colin. I have been after one of these... Uh, socket tidies for quite a while now because otherwise I have to keep carrying out my big box of uh, Halford sockets uh, out the front or whenever I'm doing something and the lid's broken on that so having one of these is an absolute ideal thing where I can just walk along and carry the sockets that I actually need to a job rather than take out literally everything in the socket box. So thanks again Colin and also thanks to Mick Mowers as I said earlier on for that marvellous impact hammer air ratchet socket that I've got and uh, as you saw, that done a marvellous job on releasing the uh, flywheel on the lawnmower. And looking over here, I thought I'd just show you this one. We was going to finish the video here, but Gary's got this uh, other leaf blower, which he paid £15 for. Both not runners. And uh, what he's done, basically, is just to put some uh, two-stroke mix in here. And we're going to go for a start on this for the first time outside. And just to see if we can get it going. So again, not really familiar with this one, but uh, apparently it does have a primer bulb down there. And uh, Gary's just pressing the primer bulb now. That appears to be working okay, so hopefully it should fire up. But again, we haven't started this. You're seeing this for the first time with us. Again, it doesn't appear to want to start, but again, we know nothing about this. We don't know how long it's been standing. So again, it's just trial and error. It's got fresh fuel in. The carb could be blocked. We don't really know. Just give it an extra prime. So again, we don't know whether fuel's getting through. Again, it could have a blocked carb. So what we're gonna have to do is take the spark plug out. And straight away, we've got a problem. 
where we can't fit the spark plug spanner in the hole. Time to bring out my new <laughs> tool rest for my sockets. And yet again, the sockets don't seem to be able to go in there. There is an issue with the surround around the uh, actual spark plug hole, the solid plastic insert, which is stopping uh, a normal socket from going on there, as you can probably see. Just there at the bottom, as you can see, it's slightly off centre. And that's probably why no one's bothered with this, because they can't get a spark plug spanner on there. All right, we've found one of these spark plug spanners that you actually get with when you buy a piece of a, a petrol garden equipment. They've got a very thin edge on them, and that's actually gone in there. So now we're able to uh, get the spark plug out. Let's just tap that on there. Yeah, as I say, the walls on this, they're only tin plate, these sort of thing, and uh, that's just enough to get in there. So with a normal socket, you didn't want to know. The plug is actually dry, so it may not be dragging fr fuel through. So what we can do initially is just squirt some uh, Easy Start in there. And hopefully it could uh, just coax things into action. Quickly put the plug back in. And then we'll go for a fire up. Right, okay, so we'll go for a start up now. It's already primed. Let's turn it on. Just hold it up like that for a minute. There we go, so pull that. Oh, how about that? Happy days. This is a vac and a blower, that's why it's got the bag on there. It just wanted a bit of a priming really to get it going. It's probably not been run for a long, long time. And uh, yeah, there we go. Nice little blower vac, that one. And that should make him a pretty penny. Anyway, this really is, we're going now. Just thought I'd show you this little quick start on this one. We haven't started it since we got it. And uh, as you can see, turn it. we'll turn that around pretty quickly. Thanks very much, see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.